Okay, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us today for our uh, session on uh, creating a vivid, vibrant vision for your life and your business. That's what we're going to focus on today. So just take a moment, just close your eyes and relax. Take a couple deep breaths in through the nose and out through the nose. Just think about some of the things you've done this Take another deep breath into the nose and out through the nose. Now, starting at the top of your head, relax your body, working your way down to the neck and the shoulders, the arms, the trunk of the body, the hips, upper legs. And lower legs, all the way down to the tips of your toes. Just relax and release any tension and just let it go. Now take another deep breath in through the nose and out through the nose. If you go into your heart, Connect to your heart. Take yourself back to the first time you floated. How did you feel? Think about the first time you thought about starting a business in the walking in the floating. Where were you when the idea came? What were you doing? What was the driving force that inspired you to align to the flip business? What impact did that have on you? Was it a strong enough impact? We knew others could experience this in a similar way. Just take yourself back to that moment. And feel the same feelings you experience. Did you feel inspiration, freedom, joy, peace? What was the emotion that day that drove you to start the process? Connect to your heart, connect to that. Try to anchor that feeling. So it's your wife. You continue to manifest the dream you started. Take a couple of deep anchoring breaths through your nose and out through your nose. And you just start to wiggle your fingers and toes, a few stretches, and slowly open your eyes. Okay, so by now, um, you've been here a few days and hopefully you've had a chance to talk to other people. Um, you've heard their stories, and we're going to start to tell you about our story. So, after our first flood experience in October, the 2000, oh, this is our, cool. um, after our first flood in October of 2016, we were absolutely sold on the idea of starting a flood center in our town. So while in this moment, we were full of a lot of things. <laughs> we were full of excitement to be able to float more frequently, full of the opportunity to bring this to our community, and full of the potential for growing this industry on the eastern shore of Maryland. By December 2016, we were incorporated. January 2017, we purchased our first flood tank. We found a room in a hair salon to rent just to get started. And by March of 2017, we had our first customer. I was working full time as a nurse case manager at a local hospital day by day and working as a float facilitator in the evenings. So I was keeping up a pretty rigorous pace. Kept this pace up for about three months, and we ultimately reached the point where we had to make a decision. 
Should we hire somebody to help us out? Or would I leave my traditional nursing job after 30 years to focus my energy full time on building our dream? We chose plan B. So that was only one flight time. We quickly realized that we needed to expand. And that's when we were reminded of, that we had to keep our why, you know, right in the forefront of our minds and our actions. So for the rest of 2017, we were met with challenges, finding a bigger location, county and state administrative naysayers who would rather create more red tape than be educated about what we were offering, a contractor who wanted to do it his way and didn't take much input from us as being valid, and the all too well known waiting game to get our operating permit and begin relaxing our community. All the while, we're paying our monthly rent and we're not even open yet. So the frustration that we were experiencing was reaching epic proportions and reminding ourselves of our why was more important now than ever. So I'd like to tell you a quick story about a young man named Ryan who, we really, who really helped us solidify our why things. I venture to guess that each of you have a Ryan type story as well. So our occupancy permit was official on January 31st of 2018. The next day, February 1st, 2018, Ryan wearing a neck brace and his mother Diane walked him to our foot. Diane later, when Alan talks about her and the mystery of the impact that he had on Diane with her anxiety. So Ryan was in his late 30s at the time, and he was working as an LPGA golf caddy in Florida. One night in the early part of 2017, he got into a freak horrific motorcycle accident, which in addition, in addition to causing a fatality, caused him to be critically injured. After he was released home from the hospital, his mother brought him to Maryland to live with her and spent the better part of 2017 trying to find therapies that would help Ryan recover. She had heard about her new flat center and said she wanted him to try it, but in her, right? So he felt so good after that first float, he became a member two weeks later, and he was floating a few times a week thereafter. His mobility was improving exponentially, and his physical therapist even asked what he was doing extra that was facilitating his progress. Well, as his legal battles associated with the accident were ramping up, and knowing that I'm a registered nurse, he approached me about a decision he was struggling with regarding antidepressants. The practice in our conversation was, I'm not a doctor, I can't medically advise you. I did challenge him to float for seven days straight and then journal about it. And at the end of the seven days, he would reevaluate his opinion or his options of starting medications or not. He decided not to go on medications at that time. And as far as I know, he has not started on his antidepressants. So I thought like, that was a good one. So as a few months went by, and with each visit, Ryan and Diane would fill me in on what was going on with their legal case. Diane was visibly anxious and frustrated with how it was all dragging along. And then a few months later, we quit seeing Ryan and Diane all together. We found out later where he went. But we learned that he did move out of the area for a while, but he's now back. He's gainfully employed. He's in a good place physically and emotionally. And he floats as often as he can. So, and this goes back to our why. The fact that we were a venue for him to feel safe and open with his thoughts is not only humbling for us, but it's a great feeling to know that we have made such a profound impact on his life. And this directly aligns with our vision to make a difference. So more about Diane later from Alan. All right, so we're cruising through 2019 and into 2020. Business was going pretty well. We we're working on our strategic plans for that year. And then bam, COVID. And in the words of Forrest Gump, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> so this, however, really forced us, uh, give us the forced opportunity to redirect our energy into a strategy that would rebuild our vision, our focus, and become clear on our why. We utilized a collection of tools, and Alan and I will describe how we utilized each of them to our advantage. So, this is our sun. This photo is not touched up. This is actual colors. This is um, Dan Drop up in Western Maryland. That was Easter Sunday morning, so we went in for the Easter sunrise. So. so, so yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about what the why, and why we took this on the why. A, a great book that we've read recently is called. Um, Starting with Why by Simon Sinek, and a couple of quotes there that really stand out for us. You know, working hard at something you do not care about is called stress. Working hard for something that you love is passion. We don't buy what people don't buy what you do, they buy what why you do it. And it's so critical for our industry. It's like, you know, thinking about what we do, 
is a special thing, but what it impacts and why it impacts people. And aligning to their why is so critical as well. It's such a critical piece of this, what we're doing. So one of the things that we, we focused on, trying to focus on our vision every day, uh, whenever we can. We both try to take time to align ourselves emotionally, mentally, physiologically to our vision so that we can take action in a passionate way to make it a reality. When we spend the time to align to our vision, our nervous system is really lit up. It's like really lit up in that uh, connection. Uh, we focus on the way to help us keep uh, going. When those moments of doubt creep in, um, when you don't think there's a time when we can, we can really make the business work, it's like, okay, this is why we're doing it. It's most important to have the why at those times when you feel like, I don't think this is going to work. So why are we doing it? What's, what's the reason? That whole story about you know, waiting for the contract, or waiting for the permits, that was such a painful time, but we said, we're going to do it, we're going to make this happen, so we're going to be stuck with it. And it's like the why, the why we're doing it is so important. Um, and when we feel overwhelmed, um, when, when you feel overwhelmed and wonder why we gave so much to achieve our dream, the strong why keeps us committed over and over again. So one of the things that we, we've focused on in the last year that was so helpful for us is, um, you know, we read the E-Myth and the E-Myth Mastery books, and we just loved them because they were so, um, gave us some ideas about what we could do to, to really align, and we know we need to benefit from following the processes, but we really weren't sure how to implement them. So it's so challenging because there's so much to do. And one of the things we realized the first few years of open is so much to cover in a small business. It's like, you know, you've got the marketing, you've got the finances, you've got bringing leads in. It's like, we, and I, I work in corporate, and, and I, I see this in big companies, but um, we have to do it all ourselves. It's like, well, how do you do it? What's the processes? How do you work? So reading this book was amazing, but we still needed to realize we need some help. So we got, um, you know, someone from EMF as a coach, and it was amazing. Um, so they helped us type that why into the how. So we say, okay, why we want to do something, we want to turn it into a how we want to do business. Uh, so we got the coach to help us. And then they helped us mainly focus at the beginning on creating a vision for the business and how to tie those strategic things to tactical things that we could work on. So we worked on learning how to work on the business, not just in the business. Because we had spent a lot of time doing the, you know, the things that we need to do in the business, but we weren't working on how do we make it keep growing and, and those kinds of things. So the first exercise we did, we completed um, a, 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 a um, what is the primary aim for our business, our life, and how does our business fit into that? So it was so powerful because we said, okay, what do we want to accomplish in our life, and how does our business drive behind that? And it was so powerful to be able, able to do the critical first step in aligning ourselves with what is it that we want to accomplish, and it's really a, that impact. We're going to have an impact on people and we're going to feel like we can have more impact on the whole clothing industry by what we're doing. So it's like, this is such an inspiration that we can to see everybody and what you're doing too. Um, so the one, so we came up with a, a statement that said, the one thing we want our guests to know about us is that they're living the life they were meant to live because we share like our passion, our gratitude, and our love of them every day. So then uh, we went on to work on the, the leadership, which is kind of like we talked about what does it mean to be a leader within our organization, you know, in terms of what are our values and, and how do we drive those values through the whole organization, create a reason to grow it. Um, we then developed like a marketing brand and talked about who our, our people were and, and we worked with Mindful Solutions, so we're excited about that, it's great, and, and Matt, so just that aligned us to say, what is it that we need to do in marketing? What's our message? Who are we trying to appeal to? Who's, who's going to be our, our main focus of our audience? Um, we didn't talk, talk went into some things. I was tell you that finance is genius. Just you know, talk about finance. Um, we, do, we talked about um, lead uh, generation and lead conversion. We talked about, you know, one of the great things that came out was when someone comes in, they don't know they're all scared about clothing. So we created a video that was like, you know, came directly from this process of like, What's our process from start to finish when someone comes in the door to make them have a great experience from start to finish? And all these things are about making a process, but they start with the why. So it's really been a very powerful process. So I um, really enjoyed that. Yeah, it's nice to think that you open your doors and people will just flock in, but it doesn't happen that way. You, you really have to work on it. You got to figure out who your customers are and how you can get to them. So 
All right, so by now, hopefully you have uh, recommitted to your why or committed to a why. And you've heard some stories about how other people got started. We told you about how we got started. And we uh, we'll start sharing some of our tools. And I bet right now you're thinking, how much is this going to cost me? <laughs> you know? um, so I want to share something with you which illustrates why it is so important for me to have worked through a lot of the inner matrix system um, processes which Alan is going to talk about in his next segment. Um, and what I worked through was the Power of Emotion series. Um, the past year, oh yeah, this is, let me share something with you guys. Okay, so the past year I started dating again. <laughs> um, yeah, so we meet every day, <laughs> sometimes twice a day. Uh, we review current events, we examine our future, making short and long term goals. Sometimes we meet over a vanilla latte, sometimes we meet over my favorite glass of sangria. In the beginning, it was a relationship full of curiosity, as well as a little bit of insecurity, kind of like a blind date. So many questions and things to learn. Is this relationship going to last? Will it crash and burn like it was in the past? Will I become obsessed with wanting to know and control every little detail? Fortunately, it's turned out into quite a skinny romance. <laughs> now, before you jump to any conclusions, I want you to know that Alan and I have been happily married for almost 26 years. <laughs> it will be 26 years. Um, he knows all about this relationship, by the way. <laughs> so, in fact, we have a threesome twice a month. <laughs> because after long discussions and many attempts at finding a solution to our issues, he and I felt that at this point in our lives and in our careers, it was really necessary to cultivate this new relationship. So, what I'm really talking about here is our relationship with money. <laughs> So this relationship was the ultimate way for us to plan our future spending and ensure that we didn't have any shit moments. <laughs> we'll beep it. Bleep it out. When unexpected expenses come up. So right now you're probably wondering why am I describing my relationship with money as if it were a romantic relationship? Well, because it's familiar. Our minds like familiarity because it, it really gets tripped up when it tries to make sense out of complicated or abstract concepts. And believe it or not, money is one of those abstract concepts. It's not just about the math. It's not just about the numbers. There's a lot of feelings and a lot of intense emotions associated with money. And in order to understand money, it has to be relatable. And uh, I'm a movie buff, so if you guys have ever seen the movie The Wedding Singer, okay, with Adam Sandler, okay, there's this line that Adam Sandler says when he goes to the bank, Talking to the bank manager, he says, I like money, have some, I like that more. <laughs> so that kind of resonated with me. <laughs> so think of a typical day in your life. Think, you think about money, you make decisions about money, you feel emotions related to money, and you spend hours of your life working for money. And you're in a relationship with anyone or anything you devote time, energy, and attention to, which means you, my salty friends, are also in a relationship with your money. So now it's just a matter of figuring out what you want that relationship to look like. Part of what I've learned from getting to know our money better is that there are a few things in order that everyone should have on their money to-do list. The passion we have for managing our money and our why drives us to find better ways on how to do it. And this list comes from Dave Ramsey's philosophy on living a debt-free life. It'll take time, so be patient. You know, it's not going to happen tomorrow, but it's absolutely possible for each and every one. So the first thing is, who like $1,000, okay, for an emergency fund, true emergencies, okay, piece of equipment breaks, you run out of salt, run out of H2O2, whatever, it's not for shopping, it's not for treating yourself, it's not for going up to a fancy dinner, it has to be for a true emergency. The next thing is pay off all your debt as quickly as possible. Cut out unnecessary expenses to the bare minimum. It will be so worth it when you are debt free. Any debt needs to hit the road right now because the interest you're paying on it is costing you a boatload of money. Number three is fully fund your long-term emergency fund. And it should be three to six months of living expenses in the event of a business slowdown or loss of earning potential. Next one is maximize your retirement investments. Now that you've paid down your debt, you have more money to invest. Pay off your home mortgage if you can, pay extra every month, and then enjoy your money. 
do fun stuff, you know? Because by this time, you're pretty much a money management, management badass. <laughs> okay. So another system that we uh, looked very deeply into um, is this, is Profit First. And last year, I read the book, the money management book called Profit First. So I think I saw it on the float collective, in fact. Some of you might use it. Some of you might know about it. Um, but after I read it, I gave it to him. I made him read it. I'm like, we're doing this. So I'm really here to say, and this is cliche, but it was an absolute game changer for us. It became the primary tool that we used to help us not only manage our day-to-day -day financial decisions, but it offered a disciplined way for us to manage future expenses and plan for when they happen with less of those shit moments. <laughs> and be sure that we were properly compensating our most valuable employees, us. So by using Profit First and Money Therapy, I was loving my daily money dates. And I'm sure my bank thought I was absolutely bonkers when it came to them and said, um, I need to open up four more bank accounts in addition to the checking, savings, and money market accounts we already have um, because we're implementing Profit First in our business. But you know what, with blank stares, they let me do it anyway. <laughs> so they required me to get good at money doubling, you know, which it didn't, it didn't really take that long. And it may sound like a lot, but I really had to learn how to delegate accounts, determine funding percentages for operating expenses, future tax payments, you see all the little breakouts there, um, income, owner's compensation, as well as any account for profit, because let's be honest here, this is the most important one. Because if we don't make any money at owning a float center or in our business, it's just a hobby that is taking up all of our time and energy, all right? So we schedule our money date, threesome, for the 10th and the 25th of each month in order to allocate our percentages into the accounts where they belong. And believe me, there's a method to this madness. So then after a grueling meeting with our CPA, who typically made me feel like I was a total business failure and often told me that in her own special way, um, <laughs> we started looking for a new CPA. <laughs> so we really needed to find someone who we were comfortable with and who we trusted. And I remember from reading in the Profit First book that there's a part that mentions that there are CPAs out there that are trained and certified in Profit First methodology. So we did a Google search and we found a local one, which is a good one too. I'm really happy we found her. We brought her on as a team member and she continues to guide us in every step of aligning our financial vision. So with all these tools at our disposal, we continue to be excited about what's going on with the business because we are more disciplined and we've seen immediate results. So by being disciplined and focused on our why, the results of our transformation have shown us that subtle revenue and membership increases were not just our dream, but became a reality. So now, there are many more smiles, far less ugly cries, <laughs> when I have my daily money dates. And Alan, I, and our money have embarked on a whole new life together with big plans for the future. Oh, and Thanks, everybody. Yeah, Bodhi. Bodhi. <laughs> okay, so I mentioned earlier about uh, the intermatrix systems that Alan is going to go into more detail about, um, and he can't talk about it in detail as I can since I was a participant. But anyway, so I worked through the Power of Emotion program. And I can honestly say that I discovered a few things about myself that I've probably been suppressing over the course of my lifetime. So now I already knew that I've never been one to be highly emotional. I don't cry or laugh very easily. Um, so as an ICU and an occupational health nurse, my training always kicked in whenever there was a situation. And deal with the event first, you deal with the emotions later. That's just the way it was. So I also came to the realization that growing up as the youngest of five children, we didn't show our emotions well or often either. Uh, unless we were fighting with each other. Um, but what I didn't know growing up was that emotions direct and drive our mind. They tell our mind where to go, how to think, what to think. Your emotions change often, just like the weather. Emotions are what you feel, but they are not who you are. So I also learned during the 12-week program that our emotions are merely energy. Sad, angry, peaceful, loving, it's all energy. And these emotions live in our nervous system, as we all learned that. Neurologically, the brain doesn't distinguish between an event that is real and an event that is imagined. And when you imagine repeatedly a great event occurring, it's as though it's actually happening. Happening, And you turn on your nervous system in a specific way. The key way to train emotions is to feel them. So if we're imagining something great occurring, then we continue to reimagine it. 
It's as though it's happening for us, and we activate that emotion. We learn how to turn on love-based emotions and turn off fear-based emotions. I began to train myself to recognize that if I was in a love-based or fear-based state, and literally I did this by setting an alert on my watch like every hour. Like when, the, when the alarm went off, I said to myself, self, where am I right now? How am I feeling? Am I in an expanded love-based or a contracted fear-based state? And then I proceeded with my day. So accountability for emotions is not fault, it's not judgment, it's just the way we recognize that we answer to our emotions. Whatever they may be at any given time. If we feel an emotion, we feel it again, and again, and again. And when we feel it with so much frequency over time, we get better at feeling it, and it's gonna activate the intensity of it. So it gets stronger. So the less frequently we feel it, the less intense it's gonna be. Our emotions are clutching. Our emotions are the electricity and the power, and our thoughts are the delivery system. Down. Continue with that. So, uh, February of 2018 was kind of a very interesting month for all of us. And so, I was working on a project in Texas. We opened our float center, um, and my father passed away. So, all those things happened in the same month. And um, so, I was introduced to this work for in a matrix system during the same that same month. And it was just a blessing for me because. Um, we opened the flood center and we were kind of anxious about that. And then all the emotions that happened with my dad passing away, it was just really, really um, kind of overwhelming for me, guess. But um, as Jeannie was saying, the way that this work goes is you kind of have to feel an emotion to kind of move through it. So I worked through the program, was able to work through that, and I was like, this is something to it. So I came, we went back to England, visited my mom, and I went to it on my own. So that was a challenging time you used, used the tools and techniques here and then came back three weeks later very strong and, and felt this really passionate love for my dad because of the work and it was all about the love side of things and the great things he done it did his eulogy and it was like that was such a great connection i felt so connected to him and you know it was a great way to use these tools in a way that was some, something like, this is something to this so um so i saw the tangible outcomes from that and since then, I've, I've just done the program over and over consistently for all that time. So I've seen things like I found an amazing job at the end of 2018 with a company called Leading Agile, where we actually helped big companies move their way of doing work. And he's a great team of people. And it just came from this visioning work that we're going to go through a little bit here. Um, a couple of years ago, we did this program called Advanced Manifestation in the Intermatrix System. And I was like, this, and I did. And Jeannie and I did this uh, uh, personal aims for the e -man. And we realized, you know, we want to live by the water. We've been in this house uh, in the ocean city for a while, but it wouldn't be great to live by the water. I wrote it down as a 10 year old. I could save for it and everything else and thought about it. And things happen. Like when you throw the, the why out in the universe, things happen. And so in four months, we had sold our old house. We found a condo by the, by, by the water, and we're living on this amazing place. And every time I get up in the morning, I go, wow, the universe is amazing. Mm -hmm. so I'm so grateful for this work. This, this, this is amazing. That's not us, but. <laughs> 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 so, um, <laughs> so, in a matrix, it's really a personal mastery system. Uh, training high achievers, and uh, they define uh, high achievers, anyone who wants to improve the quality of their life and is willing to take action to make it happen. It brings together the art of mindfulness and the science of neurobiology to rewire, train, and align the nervous system, the emotions and the thought strategies to create a life you choose. It focuses on self-reliance with consistent and intense alignment to the life vision through your emotional state. It's really focused on the emotional state first. So, you know, the beauty of this is, um, you know, with our, we have such a great tool in floating to practice these things. Like, I will have a, 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 a meditation I'm gonna work on that week. I will record a meditation every week, and I, I just go in and listen to it, and I go in the tank for 90 minutes, twice a week, and say, oh, I'm out so inspired, and so focused on my vision, so aligned with where I'm going. Um, so, I. Last year, they had an opportunity where I could actually apply for the apprentice program, which is a, a chance for me to give back what I got from the program. And I got accepted, 
this year. And it's such a great program because it enables me to pass that gift of the understanding of my inner self to other people. And Jeannie got to go through. Not with me, because that would be interesting. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have a lot of interesting conversations with one of my friends. But I'm really proud of him. He's reached a level two apprentice trainer um, status. So he's put a lot of hard work into this. It was so satisfying. And through my training, I've been able to offer a lot of our guests at the Flip Center and people through different uh, avenues. Like I'm doing a couple of these programs in virtual reality right now with a guy in California, so it's like really cool. But um, I provide the one-on-one -on -one training, kind of complimentary, as my personal development. Um, and they do a survey back and through one of the power series. And these are the four power series that we, I do with people. Power focus helps the mental strategies. Um, help help focus the mind around you know being aligned with something. Power emotions is one thing you went to us about understanding the emotions and and, tr and really truly understanding where am I emotionally so I can make um, choice to move to this love based emotion and, and actually be part of that love based emotion. So the training is like doing weights. You just basically doing more and more of this work. And the great thing is we've got the best tank, the best tool in the world to be able to do this training in emotions and, and work through them and say, I want to focus, I make the choice to be in this love based emotion. Vision is one that we do with, with focus on the vision of where do you want to be in life? What's your goal for life? And I will take a couple of people through that. And intuition is like, okay, now you've got a vision, you have your emotional focus. What, how do I use my intuition to figure out what's the next best step? You know, because intuition is basically you're, um, you're kind of centered, you know what your vision is, and something tells you, okay, with all the library of information you've got, how do I make the next best thing? And that's why we went to like EMET and those kinds of things. So it really became very powerful. So I want to share with you a couple of three questions, three, three um, experiences um, with the permission of some of the people I work with, um, because I think that the testimony of this is the power of the, of the work. So Diane, we heard Diane earlier. Um, you were introduced to her earlier on in, in the story with Ryan, Ryan's Ryan's mother, yeah. And she went through the Power of Vision series with me. She's a retired school administrator. She wanted to better define her vision for her retirement. She wanted to be a peak. So when we talk about vision, the first thing we talk about the foundation is the emotional foundation. Because really, when you're trying to get somewhere, getting somewhere is not the objective. How do you want to feel going to that place? And how do I want to feel when I fulfill it? So her one was to be peaceful, joyful, and she could visualize traveling and enjoying spending time with her family and her sons. And so we talked about that legal situation with her son, and it caused a lot of anxiety. So we talked about that a lot, the anxiety that she had with that. At the same time, her husband suffered her injury, and there were legal ramifications of that. So there's a lot of implications of what was going on. And she, she was requested to give a deposition. So that made her really blank just because of all the things that happened before, all these stories in her mind were going through, what was going on. So she used the, the power of vision techniques to focus in on this um, peace, joy, and love, and be very strong when she went to the deposition. And so she you know, kind of removed the anxiety by doing that. And she did the deposition, and she said with me, she was so excited. She said that her attorney said that her, her deposition was the top 5% of any deposition she's ever heard before, so she nailed it. Because, because she went in with that right emotional state. And so I've seen a lot of powerful changes in her. Um, it's been amazing. And then Steve. Steve had a lot of challenges focusing. He did a power focus with me. So he's got a lot of um, jobs. Job here, job, job there. He's got some things going on with his family. I would say he shared a lot of things with me. But he felt like he needed an anchor. Um, to help him focus on his life. But he's always been interested in airplanes and working on airplanes. So you visualize owning an airplane and living in a cabin by the lake. So a lot of the work you do is visualize it. What is it going to be like in 10 years from now? What would you see? And he was able to create that vision. Um, now he's enrolled in the aircraft uh, mechanic school in, in Norfolk. And so he's able to work with that. And he's driven to manifest that vision. And last one I'll share with is Kate. Um, Kate was interested in the power of intuition. Um, she knows he had a, she had a vision to have home ownership in Ocean City. And she's young, she's mid thirties, um, and she was in a, doing a lot of energy work with me. And she said, oh, "I just want to know more power of my my intuition." And so the, the, through that program, she was able to understand how to cultivate her intuition, intuition, 
And it worked for her. She was able to have confidence to take action, to make the decisions that she felt good about, and that aligned her vision. She's become a house where she loves it. She feels really peaceful. She's really fulfilled now with where she's going. And she feels more emotionally fulfilled as well. So those are kind of some of the examples that we had for the program, and, and we just really found it very, very powerful. So one of the things that we talked about, um, I was in a training program the other week, was, was really staying with something. And because a lot of times when you um, when you set a vision, there's going to be times when you just say, yeah, I just want to do that. And it's choosing between what you want now, which might be, okay, I can't, this is too painful, I've got to get out. But what is it you want most? And so this is a great quote from Abraham Lincoln that kind of sums all that up. Okay, so we're gonna wrap this up here in a minute. Um, now we we honestly and truly feel that over the past years, past year rather, um, we've had the charge back up of creating a successful business. Number one is create your vision of what you want your business to look like, but more importantly, determine how you want your business to serve you and your lifestyle. You know, make your why like front and center. We're big believers in the concept of not sacrificing your personal life, time, or freedom to grow a business. It just doesn't have to happen that way. Number two, make sure every dollar, whether it's income or expense, has a J-O-B. Get up and personal with your finances and be unapologi unapologetically possessive of every single dollar you earn and spend. And maybe more important, most importantly, I don't know, don't go it alone. You know, find a mentor, work with a business coach, talk to a buddy in this industry or somewhere else. Just have your team and your sounding board, people you can work with and bounce ideas off of, and just keep them in your circle. Make sure that every day is more successful than the last. Should we do the final meditation? Yeah, great. So, I invite you to. Um, just get to put your things down, just start to relax, and we're going to do a quick meditation. Just close your eyes. And probably before we start, I'm going to share this music that's actually provided by one of our guests that's like dubbed Splitting So Much that makes music for live beach when we put it on our both hands. So just close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Do you know? Out through your nose. Take another deep breath. In through the nose. And out through the nose. Now start to relax your body. Starting at the top of the head. Work your way down to the neck. And shoulders. Arms. Trunk of the body hips, upper legs, lower legs, all the way down to your feet. If you find any places of tension, just relax. Let that tension go. Take another deep breath. In through the nose, and out through the nose. Go to your heart, connect to your heart. Think about your float business in 10 years in the future. Imagine getting up in the morning and visualizing your mind the movie your day 10 years from now. What do you see? What do you see manifested in your life? What does it look like? Play the movie in your mind as vividly as possible to make that vision a reality in your mind. What do you feel? 
you feel inspired, if the lives you've impacted, if you enjoy with the team you've built. Every successful business or invention or major accomplishment started with a vision inside. How will you be different? How will the world be different? How will the industry be different? Who have you impacted? <clears throat> How do you want to feel as you go through the next 10 years accomplishing your vision? Do you want to feel fulfillment? Passion, joy, inspiration. What do you want to feel? How do you want your mind to think? Do you want to think thoughts of inspiration? new ideas, fulfillment in the things you've accomplished. What actions are you going to take in the next 10 years to move you to that vision? Just play that movie in the mind. What's that day going to look like in 10 years? And just feel it in your heart. Connect to your heart. And anchor to that feeling. Feel it like, feel like getting stronger inside as you visualize it in the future. Is your vision becoming more vivid? Can you see the colors? Can you smell the smell? What do you see now? Keep painting that more vivid picture of your future. Who are you impacting? People finding their own peace because you offer their your services. coming back to that vision and play that movie. couple of deep anchoring breaths through the nose, out through the nose. Just try to anchor to that feeling. Deep, 
deep breath. Start to wiggle your fingers, your toes. Stretch if you want to. Thank you.